Entanglement is what makes quantum physics special, but in a new experiment, a group of physicists showed that they can get the effects of entanglement without entanglement. It shouldn't be possible. And no one has any idea what's going on. Did they just break quantum physics? I've had a look. Entanglement is a type of correlation between multiple particles and it can survive across potentially large distances. That it's a correlation across distances just means that there are things, particles or otherwise, in different places which have properties that are related to each other. Correlations across distances per se are not a quantum phenomenon. The clock on your phone is correlated with the clocks on everybody else's phone across distances because that's the point of clocks. What makes entanglement special is that the correlations are measurably stronger than they could possibly be without quantum effects. For this, one measures some properties of the entangled particles in different places and then calculates the correlations between the measurement results. If the strength of the correlations exceeds a certain bound, then we know it's really entanglement and not any other sort of correlation. This is called a Bell test, named after John Bell, who came up with the idea. Not to be confused with Alexander Graham Bell, who came up with the idea of people yelling, can you hear me now? And no, entangled particles do not non-locally influence each other. How does one create entangled particles? It's not all that difficult, really. You just need any process with a quantity that can be shared among particles, but so that you can't tell which particle has which share. A typical example is to use a type of crystal that spits out two photons for any one that goes in. The momenta of the two outgoing photons must then add up to give that of the ingoing one because momentum is conserved. So the photons are now entangled. In the new experiment, the authors also use photons, but their setup takes some explaining. You see it here. You see, they have four of these stations. These are materials that have the property that if you shine on them with a laser, then sometimes they'll emit a pair of photons. And then they have two measurement stations, one for the photons that come from these two emitters and one from those that come from the other two. What they do then is that they either shine a laser on these two, which creates four photons, two on each side, or they they do it with the second two. They do this so that from the photons alone, it's impossible to tell which pair of emitters they came from. In each measurement station, they then measure the interference between the two photons after a phase shift. The important point is that this measurement is a belt test. It's an indicator for whether the photons left and right were entangled. They shouldn't be because there's only entanglement on each side, not between the sides. Yet, what they find is that the two sides are entangled. The authors don't know why, really. They just speculate that it's got to do with the fact that in their setting, one can't find out the origin of the photons from the measurement they are now doing further tests. New Scientist has lined up a few experts who have some ideas about what might be going on. Stefano Paisani says the issue might be the post-selection. What he means is that these emitters don't always fire two photons when they should. The authors therefore only use the data for cases when they actually have four photons. It's possible that something went wrong there, but I think it's a fairly standard thing. Jeff Lundin thinks one can get entanglement without entanglement, but that it just doesn't mean anything. I don't think so. And then there is Ephraim Steinberg who thinks there's still some entanglement in this experiment. Indeed, that was my first thought too. I suspect that the laser induces an entanglement between the two sides of the experiment, because laser light is much weirder than they say. In any case, I don't doubt that they've measured what they say they have measured, so I give this paper a 0 out of 10 on the bullshit meter. But what does it mean? Well, if it's right and one can get entanglement without entanglement, that'd be a foundational crisis. It really shouldn't be possible, never mind what that guy said to New Scientist. However, 
it's somewhat too early to declare quantum physics dead. For the moment, it's more like a hiccup. But let's see what happens if they do these tests. So maybe one can have entanglement without entanglement. What's next? Physics without physics? Of course, there's always the possibility that I just don't understand it. In which case, you're now entangled in my confusion. Quantum mechanics, algorithms, statistics, it sounds scary, but don't let yourself be intimidated. Have a look at the courses on Brilliant because I found them to be great at breaking down complex ideas into interactive lessons that anyone can follow. All courses on Brilliant have interactive visualizations and come with follow-up questions. What you see here is from their newly updated maths courses. No matter how abstract the topic seems, Brilliant's courses have intuitive visualizations that really click into my brain. I found it to be a highly effective way to build up knowledge. And Brilliant covers a large variety of topics in science, computer science and maths, from general scientific thinking to dedicated courses, just what I'm interested in. And of course, I have a special offer for viewers of this channel. If you use my link brilliant.org slash Sabine or scan the QR code, you'll get 20% off the annual premium subscription. So go and check this out. Thanks for watching. See you tomorrow.